Welcome to CNBC Africa's special. My name is Arnold Quizera coming to you live from Kigali, Rwanda. And today, in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, we are going to talk about health, fitness, the economic aspect of that, and possibly the opportunities that arise from such a black swan moment. Yes, you had it right. There have been opportunities for some industries, some for SMEs. But what are the people who are leading some of these industries? What do they think should be done? to ensure that there is sustainability, eventual scalability, and what is the future of this industry. Now with us is a distinguished panel, yes, made up of ladies who are running some of these industries. Uh, and if, uh, if you allow me to introduce some of them, uh, we have Marcella Felde. She is the managing director of Waka Global Fitness. Uh, we also have Sandra Asimwe, she is the CEO of Fresh UG and Paul Umohoza. She's also the CEO and founder of Yami and Fresh. Thank you for making the time, ladies, and for joining us for this discussion. I just wanted to start off uh, with you, Paul Umohoza. Paul, you had a company that started way before uh, COVID-19, and you've been uh, in the startup world for some time now. And just from your experience, could you tell us what have been the challenges uh, ever since the lockdowns and curfews started happening for your business? Yeah, thanks again for having me today. Um, I started my business uh, in 2017, and uh, obviously no one ever thought that this pandemic could happen. And when they announced the first case here in Kigali and we went into a total lockdown, I personally decided to close my business. So I went from running a business to shutting down and I closed for about um, a month. So obviously that meant my staff was laid off for that time because I could not pay them. And I, was, I did that to understand how to operate in this pandemic because you know you have to adjust the way that you, you work. Uh, so I decided to close and that really hit us hard because uh, I could not pay my staff. I had to lay off my uh, part-time workers. Um, yeah, so I feel like I was really affected. Uh, even though most food businesses were able to continue running, I couldn't because I also operate in a home kitchen. So I felt like it could affect my, uh, my family. I decided to lay that off. So it was really tough for me uh, to also again transition and get back into business because now we are uh, back up and running. Uh, Marcel, I want to bring you into the conversation. Uh, the the business chain that you're running is one of those that were mostly hit, uh, that being in the fitness world. Uh, what has it been, how has the adjustment been and what kind of impact have you felt as a business uh, since the curfews and lockdowns? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, obviously, as a gym, we've been extremely hard hit by this pandemic. You know, we've been one of the industries that have been forced to remain closed for more than five months now. Uh, and that's drastically changed our operations. Waka is actually extremely lucky in the fact that we are not just a gym. So in accordance with the government guidelines, we've been able to keep our co-working space fully operational. A lot of people who normally work from home have switched to working at Waka during this time. And other companies who have been forced to downsize because of the current economic or financial situation they're in um, have chosen Waka as a place to rent space for their essential rotating staff. Um, we've also adapted by moving our classes outside. So with approval and guidance from Minisport, we have been able to host outdoor classes for our members um, weekly. And we've just been able to have to adapt as we go. Uh, we know that People still need our services, and we are going to do everything we can to provide those services as long as it's safe. Uh, a bit of gloom there, but it hasn't been all gloom for some of the businesses. Sandra, Fresh UG is a business that seemed more or less to have picked up during uh, the pandemic, or uh, well started just, uh, just before the curfews and lockdowns. Now, your experience has been quite different, and you've been able to scale up uh, so much in such a short period of time. Could we say this has been an opportunity for the business? Yes, I agree. You could say it's been an opportunity for the business because we started in January, that's when we opened up. 
and we were actually going to get premises prior to the whole lockdown which was a blessing in disguise that it happened when it did because we sort of changed our direction and we went from our initial plan of opening up an actual store which is the brick and mortar that you know we're all used to to going online completely and uh, we've been able to focus our efforts online and the results have not been bad i should say keywords uh, that are you using uh they many of more or less if I'm to paraphrase, is has been a, a adaptability, adaptability of your businesses. And Sandra, I want to start with you before I come back to you, Paul. You had it in your earlier comments. You had to evolve and adapt. Uh, Sandra, you've had to change your business model from what you initially planned. How have you gone about yeah. that to ensure that your business starts to pick up and is sustainable? I think we really pretty much have to, had to change how we look at business. And for everything that we intended to do as fresh on the ground, that is have premises, have people do marketing, advertise, we're doing everything that we would have done on the ground online. So all the resources that we were initially planning to invest in an actual store, we're now using all those resources into building um, a website, um, increasing our visibility and advertising online and using all the different aspects and avenues, um, email marketing, to try and get clients from the internet, pretty much. Paul, to bring you back into the conversation, you talked about adaptability. You were affected negatively at one point. How are you adjusting to ensure that uh, the business continues to thrive? advantages I had again was that I was operating online uh, through the third party company that does our deliveries, which is uh, Vuga Vuga. Uh, so it was quite easy to get back to business in terms of um, our, our operations. Uh, so in terms of adaptability, I wouldn't say there's been much to adapt, at least for my business, because it's mainly delivery and that's what other, other restaurants had to do. So for me, it was more just get back to business now that I saw, okay, now all, we, all my stuff have to do is start wearing masks, you have to wash your hands before you, you get to the kitchen, even while uh, cooking, you have to really practice a lot of uh, sanitization. Uh, so in terms of operations, I didn't have to adapt much, um, but in terms of uh, maybe like the people who are going to procure vegetables right now, they have to be extremely careful because of the markets that are highly affected. So it's more in terms of the sanitization of the uh, impacts of the pandemic right now. So basically using digital tools has worked for you. Uh, Sandra, it has been infancy, but uh, Marcella, bring you back into this conversation. Uh, you, you don't have the luxury to just be a digital business. You know, yours is more or less a very physical one. Uh, is there a chance of you even adapting to what we are seeing as the new normal because of this black swan moment? Yeah, um, we actually were able to switch pretty quickly during lockdown, even at the very beginning of lockdown, to providing online content for our members. Um, we have a, a wide range of very skilled instructors and personal trainers, and um, with the use of some technical help, we were able to get them filming at home their own workout routines so that we could start sharing that with our members online through Facebook and social media. Um, we noticed that there was a huge uptick during the first initial lockdown um, on social media, and it was really a key way for us to get to reach our members um, who were feeling quite restricted um, at home and unable to leave their houses at the initial period. Um, so we were lucky that we had the resources and the team to mobilize quickly and make that transition. Um, since the lockdown has eased a bit, we've noticed that people are less interested in keeping up with that kind of online content and people are really just craving that in-person um, interaction with their coaches and trainers. And that has been quite difficult, but we have been able to keep in, keep in line with the mini sport guidelines and provide that social distance, outdoor um, environment for our members. And we hope that, you know, with future guidelines, we'll be able to um, continue adapting to those, to the current environment. 
Okay, just, just coming back, uh, staying with you there, Marcella, I wanted to talk about uh, solutions uh, from a policy perspective to ensure that uh, there is a reopening of your businesses during what we may be the new normal going forward. What do you expect from policymakers? Because your business pays taxes, it brings jobs to, to the economy. Uh, what could be this solution moving forward? Yeah, I think that's um, an important question. Obviously, at this point and juncture in time, um, we're really, you know, we have to put safety first and the, the economics of it are also tough at this point in time. But um, we know that we've already been able to implement a lot of really strict, strict safety measures because we've already practiced by opening our co-working space and our outdoor classes. Um, so really, it's, it's about, you know, making sure that we stay in line with what the government's um, determines is a safe uh, way to operate. Um, so the measures that we put in place are, you know, as other businesses have, you know, checking members' temperature upon arrival, enforcing the use of face masks, using hand sanitization, and social distancing, being really strict with social distancing. That means not just, you know, the physical distance between uh, members and trainers, but also the equipment being spaced, removing those hard to clean fitness accessories, um, you know, really making it uh, stripped back. But as a gym, we also have software that enables us to um, control the number of people who are attending our gym. So we really know when we hit our maximum safe number of members inside of our space based on the square footage of our space. We'll be, you know, rotating a class schedule in order to um, have cleaning done in between sessions. And most importantly, we, we've taken the time to really prepare our staff and our members to adapt to these necessary changes so that we can operate safely um, within the guidelines presented by the government. Paul, just, just uh, maybe to piggyback off what uh, Marcella is saying as a solution, uh, uh, as a startup, uh, you've been in the works for about three years now. Uh, grants are being offered for some businesses. Uh, in Rwanda, Economy Recovery Fund has been set aside uh, f to support businesses possibly like yours, uh, do you think they should be more of a kick in the butt uh, from governments to help businesses like yours survive uh, the pandemic? Well, definitely. Um, businesses have been hard hit mostly and uh, the survival of the economy relies on SMEs right now. And I've been lucky to be able to get a small grant that has really helped me right now. And if I didn't have that, that probably would have uh, minimized my chances of surviving during this time and maybe even expanding. I was able to keep my staff and I was able to um, hire two more because of this grant. So um, more opportunities like this will really boost the economy through young SMEs like us um, to survive and to also support others and create more jobs. It's definitely necessary. and. We are grateful that our government is really considering this and there are a couple of grants going around. I've been, able, I've been lucky to get one. Uh, so I think it's really important and it's, it's really helpful for those of us who uh, are lucky to get such opportunities. And even other businesses, I'd encourage them to, to look out for these grants because they're really helpful and they'll help us to keep pushing through this uh, difficult time. Uh, not one who wants to make comparisons, uh, but bring Sandra back into the conversation. Uh, no, 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 not all uh, startups are in an environment uh, that, you know, an ecosystem uh, that could be uplifting, as what Paul is trying to explain there, of, you know, needing more kick in the butt, but there also seems to be a form of trust. Uh, Sandra, there has been talk of, you know, some form of boost for startups uh, in your country, but uh, do you think uh, it is doable, and if not, what do you think the government they can do to ensure that startups uh, like yours are able to grow during uh, this period of time? I think uh, Uganda is uh, an economy that has mostly young people, so we have a very big percentage of startups. Um, the grants that are available are probably most going to be able to reach the majority of the of the economy. In as much as the government is, is trying to help out, it may not be very practical to expect the help to reach everybody. But I think the government can help in different ways. Um, the ways that all businesses can benefit from, for example, the lending rates, 
a lot of businesses are struggling with the arrears in terms of the, um, the rent that they've accumulated during this period where they were not allowed to offer regular lockdown. So if the bank could, uh, if the government could come in and have the bank enforce more lenient lending rates, then that would help out. And um, it could also help out with the, the seller contract. We have a bit of an issue in terms of um, the high the high tariffs for internet. Most of the businesses are now working online, and um, it would help if, if internet is a little bit cheaper. Uh, thank you. Uh, enough of uh, government policies and all this. Let's you know. Let's let's get into your consumers as well. And uh, Sandra, I want to start with you, Paul, you can pick a bank off after, and Marcella, because you've done a long time as a business to try and change its narrative. The narrative ideology, you can jump in straight after Paul. Sandra, narrative is a very, um, is, is, is a very touching aspect when it comes to businesses, especially if you want to change consumer behavior. Now, uh, Fresh UG and Yummy and Fresh I, uh, in a business world that is seen as one luxurious, two very expensive, and here we're talking about healthy eating. Yeah, people believe only a certain group of people can afford healthy meals. Yeah, uh, what role and what have you been doing to change this narrative? Sandra. It's information, information, information. I think as uh, being in the health sector, one of our biggest roles is to educate. And um, before you even market your product, you must make sure that people sort of understand it. I get the question that uh, people are not really willing to pay much for a ballot, for example. It's uh, not seen as food per se, especially here in Uganda. But I think the same thing, um, the more educational people when it comes to blogging, when it comes to social media, on the internet, the more people learn, the more interested they are in talking. And I don't think you can change that narrative any other way. Our first duty is to educate and then sell our product. Because when people understand, then they're willing to buy. Paul? It is true that uh, people think uh, eating healthy is uh, expensive or for the rich. But I believe that Africans, we are blessed with the best vegetables and fruits. And at the most affordable rates that you'll find anywhere else in the world. So I always tell people, look at what you're consuming. And like Sandra said, it's, it's all about educating and creating awareness. So when the, what, what you find is available in the market is usually really expensive. And that's one thing that really inspired me to start my business. Because I would look at other restaurants of, uh, offering maybe a salad and you find it extremely expensive. And if you're using locally sourced uh, produce, there's no need to make this item too expensive. So that's, that has been my goal, to make healthy food, you know, affordable and then also exciting. Because some people make healthy food not too tasty and people kind of get bored. They think, okay, it's expensive and it doesn't even taste good. So why should I waste my money spending money on a meal that I'm not even going to enjoy? So my goal is to always make people enjoy the experience of eating healthy and not spend too much money. And that encourages people to always come back. So healthy food is not necessarily expensive. You just need to uh, learn how to play around with food and make it more you know, exciting and more tastier. Marcella, uh, Walker has expanded to various locations now, uh, but that didn't come easy. The narrative around, you know, workout fitness was, you know, it's just, just like health eating. It's for a certain group of people, uh, upper middle class and the likes. Uh, but you have been at the forefront of changing the conversation around that. What are some of those tips uh, for other businesses that you've had to ensure that, uh, that people look at fitness uh, in a different light. Um, yeah, when we first started out at Waka, um, it is definitely seen as kind of a luxury item to have a gym membership. Um, and one of the things that we've prided ourselves on is that since we've expanded to more locations, um, we've been able to um, create a more accessible package for people at, like every day. And so um, people, people need to see that, you know, taking care of your health is like a necessary part, an exercise is a critical part of living a healthy life. And 
Not only that, but it helps reduce incidence of diseases and it protects our physical health, our mental health. Um, and we we serve, um, you know, we have we serve corporate clients who you know take breaks from their day at work to take an hour class at Waka before going back to work. People feel, you know, corporate our corporate clients feel like their employees get energized from coming to Waka. Um, they have more motivation. They have more energy. Um, it really it really does help people create a more balanced life. Um, and that's where we added that concept of we're not just a gym, we're a place where you can work, live, thrive. We've got nutritional cafes, we've got um, trained physiotherapists and personal trainers. So it's really um, a whole experience. It's not just you know sending you to the gym to run on a treadmill for half an hour. It's a place where you can find community, find balance, and um, really help improve your life. Marcella, one of the things uh, doctors have been talking about, especially during this time, is uh, many of our governments world over have been very reactive in terms of um, health care tips that they're giving to the public. Uh, but when we would rather have had some form of preventive health care uh, tips, what's the benefit of exercise as a preventive you know, health care tool? Yeah, um, I mean, as I was just saying, yeah, exercise is really critical to a holistic, healthy, balanced life. It, and on top of that, it does help in many instances, it helps reduce the incidence of disease. And as we've seen, you know, in the pandemic, um, you know, people who are fitter, stronger, healthier, you know, tend, tend to do better against fighting viruses. Um, and it's not just about our physical health. You know, our mental health has also been tested during this time. A lot of us during lockdown really struggled with the limitations of this pandemic and what it meant for us. And um, exercise is also something that brings balance to mental health. Um, so there are definitely a lot of preventative measures and um, that exercise can help prevent health conditions from developing and it can also help people manage chronic conditions. So, um, all in all, the pandemic has definitely created some challenges to maintaining a healthy lifestyle, but I think with the current current ease of restrictions, we are still able to exercise and help live healthier lives. Paul, well, has, has, has the pandemic uh, forced people to rethink uh, their eating habits? I, for one, I know I have rethought my eating habits, but uh, on an overall scale, when you look at your consumers and customers, uh, do you feel like uh, the pandemic has helped uh, to has helped to reshape what they eat and put in their bodies on a daily? I think it has. Um, it really has. And also it has created rumors. Uh, the other day someone was telling me that they read on the internet that bananas cure uh, COVID-19. And in a sense, I was like, okay, that's, that's a bad thing. But as long as that rumor is helping this person to eat healthy, I'm okay with that. You know, so people have really noticed that if you're healthy, you have higher chances of surviving this, this disease. And we see that younger people are more resistant to the to the to the to COVID and people who are healthy. And if you have any underlying uh, issues like diabetes, obesity, um, you you have higher chances of getting very sick and possibly dying. So people are realizing that if I'm healthy, I have chances of surviving and beating this virus and probably not even having any impact on it. So yeah, definitely we've seen a rise in clients. We have more people subscribing to our meal plans because they're realizing I need to be more healthy, I need to be fitter. If you go around in Kigali, like at the premature roundabout, for those who are in Kigali, there are a lot of people who are running around, finding other options for exercise. And I personally go for the worker class uh, at Kimi Hurura. So we are, people are adjusting, like we said, this pandemic is forcing us to readjust, to find better ways to uh, be healthier. People are opting for YouTube channels that offer exercises. So people are realizing that it's very important, according to the statistics available, showing that if you're healthy, you have higher chances of, of, of not being affected. And if you are sick, there are chances that you might get very sick and possibly die. So we encourage people to you know, take care of their, themselves, both by exercise and eating well. Uh, we are running out of time, but Sandra, as you just, you know, piggyback off what uh, Paul has just uh, been answering, you know, uh, are people rethinking their health habits or eating habits during 
the pandemic. Could you also tell us, uh, in your parting shots, uh, the possibilities of scaling up for businesses like yours uh, because of this pandemic? Yes, I think the possibilities are endless. A lot of us have been following um, just the growth and Amazon, and I think this is our time that we can just as well. There's so many opportunities happening on the internet that so we can take advantage of and we can rethink how we do business. Um, delivery is not a production, there have not been very um, much there, especially in, in Uganda. So a lot of us are looking now at uh, the many opportunities in logistics, delivery, the opportunities in uh, Making food yourself because now the barrier to entry is much less. Since we don't need to carry the people are here because we don't need to carry, we have to have a store in a big mall to supply your food. So I think the opportunities are endless. And it's up to us to, to take it up and um, see where it leads us. Uh, th thank you there, Sandra, and thank you for those remarks. Uh, Marcela, scalability as we leave, you have about a minute for expansion this year. Um, unfortunately, with the pandemic, those plans have been postponed. So I think we, it's going to be, it's going to, it's a fluid situation. We have to see how we can do this year and how long it will take people um, to return to normal or whatever that normal looks like. Um, but we plan on making every, um, we plan on expanding. We just, we're just pushing it down the line a little bit. We're going to focus on recovery and being conservative this year. Um, just and see how things go. We really need to see what our members need in the coming year and um, what this will look like for our business in the coming year. Um, obviously, this is not just about um, this year, but I'm sure the impact of this pandemic will span over the next couple of years. So for us, it's really about um, gauging the context of the environment that we're in and adapting. Paul, as you live, should we expect Yami and, uh, and Fresh to be in Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, or, you know, Senegal in the near future? That's the dream, and that's the goal, yes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for making the, the time. Uh, ladies, that was uh, Paul Umohoza Kirabo. Uh, she is the CEO and founder of Yami and Fresh, uh, also on the panel. We had Sandra Asimo. She's the co-founder and CEO of Fresh UG and Marcella Fedley. She is the Managing Director of Waka Global. Our conversation was on health and fitness and the economic benefits of that during a pandemic. Uh, my name is Arnold Quizera. You can tweet us if you want to be part of this conversation at CNBC Africa, or you could tweet me directly at The Real Quizera to join the conversation. Have a great rest of your day.